concern, not least of all myself. But good afternoon and welcome to this crisis simulation webinar. I'm Jim Preen, Director of Crisis Management at UDU Sentinel. And for those who don't know, we make crisis management and crisis communication software. Um, I'm delighted to say, hopefully you can see my screen, and on the right-hand side there is the BCI logo. Um, and I'm delighted to say that today's webinar is presented in conjunction with the Business Continuity Institute. BCI has over 8,000 members in more than 100 countries and is the world's leading resilience organization. Uh, today, I'm joined, and I'm hoping you can see these guys on your screen. Today, I'm joined by Richard Stevenson, CEO of Udo, and cybersecurity expert Amar Singh. Um, yeah, there he is. There's the man himself. Um, Amar, do you want to? Um, oh, no, I'm just put this, this. You see, I'm already getting behind here. Here we go. Here. Um, Amar, could you just tell our audience um, a little bit more about yourself? They can see a little bit about you on the screen right now. Excellent. Greetings, everyone. Um, Jim, I hope you can hear me. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time out. Every single gray hair you see here is a cyber attack. <laughs> 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 and Uncle Richard has lost all of his hair because of the cyber attacks he's been in. I'm just joking. But uh, everyone, thank you for taking the time out. Um, I'm a cyber security executive. I love cyber. I love IT. Um, uh, I'm the CEO of Cyber management alliance you can go and check out the website obviously cm alliance and we work in partnership with you it's an honor to be here uh, crisis management cyber crisis management as you can see what it says on the tin we have several uh, uk certified or sorry uk's ncsc certified training uh, on incident planning on how do you manage a crisis and uh, we actually work very closely with you uh, do when it comes to crisis management uh, application, but also actually how do you get through a crisis? So it's an absolute honor to be here. Uncle Richard, over to you, sir. Great, Richard, go yeah. ahead. Thank you, Amar, thank you, Amar. Um, yeah, it's great to have Amar on, on us. And I think that one of the things that we like to do is to really um, partner with some really experts in the field. And as far as cyber is concerned, Amar is a, a leading expert and also a fantastic speaker um you know at events um but i would also say that um from my background yes i'm the ceo of uh, of youtube but also i've got a lot of experience in running um companies that have got high risk profiles like many of you belong to um including ones that i've done before i've been chaired financial services uh businesses where you know there is a significant cyber risk and a data risk um and so Part of what I'll be commenting about is uh, about looking at it from the, um, the company's point of view and, and the way in which how we should be responding to these types of incidents. So um, yes, Udo is very much involved in, in cyber and cyber defense, particularly about communications when that, these things happen. Um, that's the software we run, but principally I'm here um, commenting based upon my varied experience in the background and hoping to, uh, you know, bat against Jim on some of the questions he's going to be throwing at us. Okay, that's great stuff, guys. Thank you both very much. I'll be back to you in a moment. Now, I should just say that I've run quite a few of these webinars and it's a bit of a tradition when I run them for those listening to post in the Q&A box where you're listening from. So why don't you go ahead and do that now? I'd like to, like to get you used to using the question and answer box because we want you to do that as we progress today. So why don't you tell us? Well, the first one up, phenomenal. Sam is, um, is listening from Queensland, Australia, right around the other side of the world. Well, people are really on the mark today. We've got someone else from Sydney today. We've got North, this is amazing, just north of Toronto. Oh, it's Mark. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Just north of Toronto, Canada, we've got Rochester. Uh, I know Rochester, it's near where my sister lives, in fact, in Kent in the UK. We got um, 16 miles south of Cambridge. Uh, Steve, thank you very much for that very accurate representation of where you are. Um, <laughs> right, we got Oxfordshire. Uh, we got John. Hi, John. Um, we got Lester, we got Stephanie. Oh, you're, hi, Stephanie. I'm glad you got on. You had some trouble signing up, but we fixed that one up. We got Anne from Leon C. We've got Rob from Cornwall. I think 
gentlemen, you can see we've got people from all over the world here. But keep them coming as well. But uh, thank you very much indeed. And talking of questions, I do want to make the point that as we go along, we really want you to put questions, suggestions, comments in the Q&A box. Um, that's how these things work. And I want you to keep the panel on their toes today. So if you know, I want to make this as interactive as possible. If you have an, a, a point to make, then don't hesitate, okay? Well, just very quickly going back, we've got Simon from Abu Dhabi, Francois in Southwest London, presumably not far from me. Uh, we've got Robin Cornwall, perhaps I mentioned that before. So anyway, you're all entirely welcome. Um, and I'm gonna, before we get into the, set, the actual uh, cyber simulation itself, I've got a question for everybody here. Um, and I'm gonna launch the first poll. And the question is, have you had any previous experience of um, of handling a cyber crisis. Um, and I'm gonna launch the poll now, um, of quite a simple yes or no answer to this one. So I'm launching the poll. So if you could vote on this, and I should just say while you're doing this, that um, our, the event today is going to be, there are going to be a various polls which are held, which kind of help us progress through the, semin the, the simulation that we're giving you today. So I wanted you to get used to, um, uh, to using the poll feature on, on there. And people are indeed voting now. We've got 84% have 86%. Uh, Can we get any higher than 86%? I'm going to close the poll in a second. Okay, I'm going to, we just, any more last dibs on this poll? Okay, I'm closing this poll now and I'm going to share the results with you. So that, uh, well, there you go, guys. So no, people have not had any experience, but obviously they're on this event. So they're concerned about it, that 63%, but a kind of a third of people have, which I mean, that's quite high. I don't know, Richard, is that pretty much what you expected? Well, Jim, we've been doing a number of these things, and actually yeah. that's higher than on previous ones. So, um, and, and that's sort of, I think, illustrating sort of the environment we're in. So 37% of the people on this call having had a uh, experience of a cyber attack is, is, I think, quite high. Amar, you might have a view on that. Um, my answer, I actually agree with you. It is a bit on the high side, which is good or bad, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. I think maybe, 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 uh, I mean, I think a cyber attack could mean anything. I, I, I think a cyber crisis is is probably more than just a cyber attack. But on 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 balance, I think it's it's a bit on the high side, which is which is I guess a bit good news because people are hopefully aware of the impact of the negative impact of a cyber attack. Absolutely, yeah. No. Okay. All right. We're well, well, really good. And just one more person. We got Matthias dialing in from Germany, from Frankfurt in Germany. So thank you, Matthias, for joining us today. Oh, hang on, David. Oh my goodness, we've got another one in Australia. David from Geelong, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in Victoria, Australia. Um, and there we go, okay. Um, okay, oh, right, I'm gonna close this poll now and we are going to get on we've actually had a couple of questions in already but i'm just going to have to pause because we really have to get this simulation underway now so folks i everybody present you've all got a new job um you all have a you're all part of the crisis management team at bees wing airways unfortunately your job is fictitious as indeed is this airline but for the sake of this exercise here is some information which i'm hoping you can see now about the organization that you currently work for. And this is Beeswing Airline. It's a low cost airline, uh, which is headquartered out of uh, City of London Airport. It operates 150 aircraft and in 2019 carried more than 15 million passengers, making it the third largest budget airline in Europe behind Ryanair and EasyJet. And like so many others, in 2020, Beeswing grounded its entire fleet of planes because of the pandemic. But with lockdown restrictions lifting, they're once again in the air and Beeswing has seen a surge in booking. So that's a, a quick snapshot of your new job and the firm that you work for. Um, and I'm going to start the exercise now 
with a start state, which is pretty much how I start every kind of exercise. So here we go, guys. Um, and I would just say that you know, I want you to get you, yourselves across this information here. Uh, and it might be worth you taking a screenshot of um, this start state and the other updates that follow. We have newspaper articles and various things, just so that you keep across all the information that I'm feeding to you. So very quickly, IT security has discovered malicious code embedded in our customer booking website. As far as we can judge, the malware has been harvesting customer data for at least a month. As bookings have started to increase, it's possible the hackers have seized personal information belonging to upwards of 3 million customers. The data is thought to include names, contacts, passport number, ticket, and credit card details. And it's not immediately clear who is behind the attack. So as I say, it might be worth you taking a screenshot of this, but the upshot of the, all this is, is that uh, Beeswing Airways has been hacked. There's malicious code on our customer booking website, and perhaps as many as 3 million customers have had their confidential data hacked. So we're going to move now. We're going to move on to our second poll of the day. In situations like this, when you know that you have a potential emergency arriving on your doorstep, who do you activate? Who do you stand up in a situation like this? And so I'm going to uh, launch our next poll. Uh, here we go. And here it is. So the activation, which team needs to be stood up? Which team needs to meet right now? Would you say it's the very top team, the gold team as it's sometimes called, the senior management team? Or do you think it would be more practical when you know things are just kicking off to get the tactical team or the silver team on, on the case? Would they be the best team to start handling what looks like could be a serious emergency? You know you're gonna have to communicate with people. So would it be the comms team? Or would it be better to have a customer facing team in circumstances like this and stand up the retail sales team? Who do you think would be better? Now, I'm going to leave that with you a second. Oh, and people are voting or voting well already. We got 68% of people have voted. Um, I'd like to get that a little bit higher, please. If you could uh, continue voting, that would be great. Um, but we do have to move. Uh, on from this 80 percent all right last dibs on this anybody else want to vote on our activation poll which team needs to meet right now okay i'm closing the poll and i'm going to share the results with you now and so i uh, hopefully everybody can see this and, and my uh, panel can see this so 41 percent for the senior management team the tactical team would be silver comms team just two percent and nobody thinks the retail guys should meet up now so i guess i'm going to turn to amar for this one who do you think should meet now uh i hope you can still hear me okay so i just wanted to before i answer this one i think milena made an interesting point maybe the 63 percent of the earlier poll probably don't know they have been hacked that's an absolutely brilliant point milena manewa uh, Based on what we know, I would say it would be the senior management team, because if you if you read what you have shared, you know that you have already been attacked. You know that upwards of three million customer data have been gone, so you need uh, the crisis management team. Now, silver could be crisis management, assuming, but here I have made the assumption that gold is crisis management. Jim. Yeah, okay, great. Um, well, Richard, are you, are you in agreement with that? I hope you're not going to be in agreement all, all today. I want to do a, bit, a degree of dispute, dispute between the two. What do, you, what do you think on this occasion? I'm on, and I have got a history of disagreeing, so it's you know, no <laughs> good. I'm pleased you know. to hear it. Um, uh, but um, no, but I think that's that's right. I mean, this is, this is um, most likely going to be gold team. But of course, you know, each one of people on the call will have sort of maybe a slightly different structure. Uh, in our organization, but definitely from what we know, from that information you put up, Jim, then it would be the gold team that would have to be activated and then it would cascade from there. Okay, good. I mean, the, I mean, there is a point, I think it would be fair to say that it, some people might think that it would be the tactical team that would want to, to meet. And Marcos is saying maybe the senior management team could be involved when we have more information. 
Um, and uh, actually, Anne here is making a point. I disagree. Tactical to start, gold informed, so that they're aware of the situation. And I, I think I would, might well go with with um, Anne on that one. I must say, I I'm always a bit leery of of standing up the senior team straight away. But I bow to your you know your superior knowledge um, on this. Um, the, the only reason I would disagree with Anne, and again, the assumption here is that gold is crisis management. According to the slides, you already know that bad things have happened. You're not, you're not, you're you're not yet in the middle of confirming bad things have happened. So, Anne, I'm always happy to uh, uh, for you to disagree, no doubt, and thanks for actually taking part. But in this case, the bookings, that, uh, as far as we can judge, the malware have has been harvesting customer data for at least a month. So that's one information and 3 million customers have already uh, increased. It's possible the hackers have seized personal information. So if this information wasn't clear at all, and you are still in the discovery phase, I, I, I agree that the gold team should never have been invoked. But I'm reading what I'm reading briefly, and I've not yeah. see, read this in detail before. It's, in my opinion, is that because there's bad stuff already happened, it's the gold team. Okay, I mean, I mean, Sam makes the good point. I'm not sure why we're just choosing one team. You could choose both. And Simon is saying stand up silver and gold. Okay, so I, I think we're gonna we're gonna leave that now. I think it's an interesting discussion and something you might want to take away to your own organisations. Just to think. Yeah, sorry. Just to say what Stephanie has said is by now, uh, you know, the silver would have already met. Yeah. That's the assumption that I've, I've made also. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And Stephanie is saying, I think we should all be informed in our organization. Silver would meet first. Uh, Paul is saying three million records has to be gold. Crisis can be escalated if required. I'm not quite sure where you escalate beyond gold, but there we go. Whatever you call it, team must cover privacy. Oh, this is Mark saying this. Uh, privacy, legal, comms, insurance, etc. right away. So he's uh, spreading across a lot of disciplines there. Um, and Steve is saying my view would be tactical with a link to the SMT. The SMT would dictate policy. The tactical team would translate into what needs to be done. I'm very clear, Steve, and absolutely bang on there. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, senior management need to know quickly. This is from, sorry, from Ravi. Need to know quickly to orchestrate action streams, including directions to silver. Um, yes. And, the, and Dan is saying there should be immediate mitigation measures implemented. Indeed, there should. Uh, and Anne is saying tactical are there to get the comms and retail sales prepped. Then when tactical give the recommendations can gold, to gold, they can go and give the go ahead. Yeah, I see. They, they would then sign off on that. I get that. OK. Um, all right, folks. I, I don't. What I'm going to do now, oh, I've got, to, I've got to hide these results, haven't I? So we've got another poll for you immediately here, and this is to do with the regulator. And I think, you know, this is an important issue here. So I'm going to, um, whoops, hang on, sorry. I'm going to, here we go. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm launching another poll for you to vote on, please, um, which is you, you appear to be the victim of a cyber attack should you inform the regulator and you've got three options here which one of which is yes immediately the second of which is no not yet we just don't know enough the regulator will want to know more there's no point in contacting them yet and see you know honestly be quite honest about this if you're not sure about this then just say you're not sure and we'd be happy to discuss this so you appear to be the victim of a cyber attack. What about the regulator? The regulator plays a big, big role in this. 72% um, of people have voted. You're very good, very quick at voting. I'm very pleased to see this today. Um, uh, okay, we've got up, we're into the 80s now. Should they be, um, okay, 85, should you tell the regulator right away? Okay, it's, we seem to have stalled a bit here. I'm gonna close this poll and I'm gonna share the results now. Um, yeah, okay. So my panel, Amar and Richard, so yes, immediately more than half, but coming up on the inside on 41% is, uh-uh, I need more information, gonna wait on this. 
Uh, Richard, let me turn to you first on this. What do you think? Should you, well, what, what's your thoughts on this? Generally please? speaking, the decision on whether you form the regulator, you, sh you should perform immediately a, a risk analysis on, on on what's actually happened. And until you <clears throat> and if you describe to think that this is a severe breach, then you know that's when the clock starts ticking. You've got a very short period of time, of 72 hours in the UK and things different things around the world to report it. But overall, um, this is. From the data we've already got, this is a very significant breach and a significant hack, and that the ICO in the UK, for example, um, will um, rather prefer to get it early rather than, in fact, um, uh, even if you don't have all the information. So the, the sort of standard practice would be on something of si this size, any sort of risk analysis would pretty well come up to a red uh, uh, rating for this, and, and therefore, you should inform the regulator. You can always you know, add to that information when you know more. But uh, my advice is that people should get on the right side of the regulator and inform uh, immediately. You're not necessarily informing on everything if it's a minor issue. Um, the regulator doesn't want to be overwhelmed with those. But um, just from the data we already know, this already is classified as being something that is a major um, uh, incident, which I think you should inform to the regulator. That's my view. So it should be an A on that point. Excellent. Amar, do you want to come in here, please? Absolutely disagree. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Based on the question, I, I would say I need more information. And this is really important for people. I haven't linked this to the 3 million uh bees wings attack if, if it is bees wings and you know that the data is gone as we and that's then i would agree with richard however looking at the question on its own i would urge maximum caution get obtain all the facts f-a-c-t-s please that is one big mistake a lot of organizations are making i'm not saying don't inform the regulator let's be very clear do inform the regulator, but once you have enough information to call it a breach of personal information. In this case, I'm assuming it's GDPR. And I think the question could be phrased, Jim, if you don't mind, slightly better. Do you inform the privacy regulator? Do you inform, you know, the whatever regulator that needs to be informed? But but overall, I would say, folks, unless you have all the information, the factual information, uh, do not panic. Only panic when you have enough factual data to tell you what's actually happened. Okay, thanks, Omar. In defense of my question, knowing that we would have people from right around the world, I was not going to say the Information Commissioner's Office, so I kept it kind of vague, but I, I, yeah. I take no criticism. Um, all right, well, not surprisingly, we have quite a few comments here. Steve says, under data protection, that's in the UK, I think he's talking about, it's a legal requirement to inform the regulator if there's been a loss or a potential loss of personal information, which an attack on an airline would probably involved. Uh, Simon is saying risk analysis could lead to other risks. People, flight paths and seats known could be sold to a terrorist, for example. Very easy jet, he says. And so in, he says that the regulator should be informed. Uh, John is just agreeing with you, uh, Amar. He's saying yes, Amar. So there you go. You've got at least one fan on our people. Um, <laughs> And Fabrizio is saying regulators should be informed immediately given customer data are at risk, although it might depend on the internal rules of the company. Um, uh, okay, right. Um, and Anne Clark is saying, I agree with Amar. So there you go. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm going to hide those results and we're going to move this thing along here. <laughs> Richard, I'm sure you've got fans as well. Don't feel, don't feel. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'll we're laughing. The Olympic medal table, Amar is moving up the thing. I've got to catch him up. Okay, <laughs> it's this kind of uh, fantasy football we're on here. Yeah, All right, yeah. guys, let's get back to the story here. So I'm afraid to say that Beeswing Airline is now in the press, and when you're in the press, there's always risk of reputation 
damage. So reputation management might be in order here. So very quickly, hackers are suspected of accessing email and travel details of more than 3 million Beeswing customers, said two sources familiar with the investigation into a cyber attack disclosed by the British airline earlier today. The sources said hacking tools and techniques used in the attack pointed to a group of Russian hackers. The news of the data breach could result in a hefty fine for the budget airline, which is struggling, having seen flights and passenger numbers decimated because of the global pandemic. A Beeswing spokeswoman declined to comment on the extent of the hack or who was responsible. And the boss, Derek Whitaker, Beeswing's chief executive, said there was heightened concern about personal data being used for online scams with more people working at home because of the pandemic and because of lockdowns. Although I must say in London, that does seem to be changing a little bit. So there's some more information, not huge amounts of new information there, but as I say, the fact is you're now in the press and that can cause you problems as well. So what do I have for you? Well, of course I have a poll for you, but if you wanna take a screenshot of that, just get across those facts that I've given you there. We are now coming to what is your top task right now? Um, so here, you, I've got various tasks that you might think might be your top task. And you might say to me quite, quite respectably, Jim, we would probably be addressing quite a few of these tasks. But I want you to make a decision and take your top task right now. But however, if you don't think any of these should be your top task, well, you know where to go. You go to the Q&A box and you put in what you think your top task should be. So I'm gonna launch our latest poll here, which is what is your top task? And you know what to do. I want you to vote on this. But um, as I say, if you're not happy with any of the tasks that I've given you, you tell me um, what you think. Um, I'm just looking, we're getting some more questions come in. Hope, can I just leave you to vote on this at the moment? People are considering this. Um, yeah, okay, okay, good, that's great. Uh, okay, right, okay. All right, 50% of people have voted. Keep thinking about what your top task would be. Okay, we're up to 60%. I would like to get a few more people in first, please. Okay, up to 70%. Quick on the buttons here. All right, guys, last dibs for voting on what, I know we're rushing you along here, but we only have, uh, gosh, we've only got half an hour left, so we do need to, to move things on a little bit. We're up into the 80s now. Anybody else want to... Uh, vote on this. So I'm now going to close the poll. It's closed and I'm going to share the results um, with you. Okay, hopefully everybody can see this and we're quite quite split here. So let me see. First up, reassure customers that we take security seriously. Uh, speak to the media only 10%. Find out the extent of the data breach. That's the biggest one we've got open communications with the hackers, nobody wants any part of that, or send a memo to staff, which we have 5% on that. Amma, would you care to take this one, please? Mute, Amma. can you hear me now? Hello. Hello, I couldn't yeah. hear you right then. Okay, Sorry. you with us? Yeah. Yes, uh, based on this slide, I would still say what you have off actually offered as an option, I need to know more information based on the slide, because there is a lot of room for conjecture, there's a lot of room for rumor, they're suspected. Yeah, I know. I'm a, sorry, I'm not going to let you get away with that. I want you to take, what is your, if you were running Beeswing Airline, Airline I would say, now, what, yes. what would be your top task right now? Uh, right now, find out, give me the facts. Before right. I go and tell the media anything, there might be rumors circling around. This is, I'm, I'm, I've been in these situations many times, folks. The media, the rumor may already be circling around. Yeah, People are going to be telling a lot of other stuff. Okay, ooh, Russians have attacked you. Ooh, my email's gone. You, before you open your mouth, in my professional opinion, you better have as much factual information because once you speak you can't take it back and if you start changing information 
there are many many case studies out there once and yes uh, i think uh, daniel has said all many of these things would be happening in parallel however you've got to have fact before you make a statement because once you say oh there's nothing to worry about or if you say yep your email your data is gone and then two days later you you say oops sorry um your data isn't gone it's actually okay you've dug yourself a hole it's very difficult to come out of folks that's my opinion so so it's but so of all those selections it would be find out the extent of the data breach or be, you would you would even think even wider than that what would what's I think your even wider. like i said give me all the facts okay you can put you can put out a holding statement we are investigating that's about it in my opinion because if okay. you if you say the cliche we take security seriously uh you're going to be made of, in my opinion that's not the right thing to say because everyone there is no person ever going to say hey by the way folks we don't take security seriously right um it would be funny if they said that but there is no one ever going to make a statement saying we don't take it seriously well, I, I can tell you that Fabrizio doesn't agree with you, Amar, I'm going to tell you here. He disagrees. He said you should at yeah, least go out. I love people to disagree. OK, well, I'm just telling you what he says. He yeah, said yeah. You, you should at least go out reassuring customer and the public that you have the situation under control. This is also considering stock market and reputational damage. Yes, but, um, that, that, but that's what I, sorry, but that's what I meant. Holding statement. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, don't, OK close anything speak to the media could be holding statement i agree uh, so but at the same time in the back end you've got to make sure you have all the facts once you do then your narrative is ready to go fully okay yeah. fabrizio yeah. forgives you and he now agrees with you am i <laughs> yeah. Um, Jim, yeah, Jim, I'm, I'm, going to come, I'm going to come to you in one second. I just there's a heap of questions here. Uh, honest communications with all with others, everybody other than hackers, and continue to find out the extent of the break, data breach. I think it is okay to say you don't have a definite answer uh, right from the word go. Um, okay okay so, so john is saying the question was top task all of these may happen and you have to prioritize and i and i totally buy into that john i think crisis management is a lot of crisis management is all about prioritization richard would you want to come in please well i i'm i, I hate to do this but i i am i'm going to agree with amar on this okay. um, and that um the, the thing is that if you just look at it we just don't know enough and the, um, the, the the real focus, the real energy should be to get really uh, a real handle on what's happened. Because when you do speak, and, and I'm, I'm all for the holding statement, by the way, but when you do speak, you want to be seen as being the trusted source of the truth. And, and therefore, you've got to have positive information, actually real information. I think you also need to be rather careful about saying, um, you know, it's all under control because that is actually making a statement that, that it is under control. Of course, that's what people want to hear, but um, there's other sort of use of words you should be using here, um, that you're, you know, got full, very competent investigation teams who are working through um, to actually establish the facts. But it's really important to go with some meat when you eventually stand up there and, and take them on. And I think uh, somebody who said that it's okay to say you don't know, um, that that is absolutely fine, and, and that honesty in communication uh, has proven to be the best model uh, as you go through it. But as Amar said, is that if you make statements too early uh, about something, actually make a statement and have to row back, your credibility is gone very quickly, and your credibility is on the line right away because you've been hacked. So it's really important to manage that. But the, the focus is getting more information, Jim, and, and therefore C, I, for me, is the right answer there. Okay. Okay. I've got, I've got a, thank you very much, Richard. Um, Anne makes a good point that she feels that all social and web-based sites with cust, you know, customer-facing web-based and social sites should be getting updated. So the social media team will need to be on this, but obviously you'd have to work out what the messages are that you want to get across. Steve. Steve is saying uh, reassuring customers speaking to the media is pretty pointless unless you have the facts to give them. Totally agree with not opening comms with the hackers. This is the last thing you should be doing at this stage. Um, 
Marcos is saying a generic message to calm the media. If we don't position ourselves, the media speaks what it wants. And that's an interesting point, which we could discuss possibly. Um, Anne is saying a holding statement is paramount while you get the facts. That's why I said to speak to the media. Um, and uh, uh, all right. OK, now this is an interesting point. Virag makes makes a good point. Would be nice if the experts chose to agree on one option only. And if I can just say, Virag, the, the point of this thing here is that there isn't always just one option. And that's why I like to see the experts disagreeing here, because Jim, you're going to be Jim, in a situation. Sorry, go ahead. Um, sorry, Jim, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. And it's, it's a good point, but there are too many moving parts in a crisis, right? Um, and you have to juggle. It's, the sad, it's a sad reality. Uh, if Virag wanted one choice, then obtain facts before you say anything. To Anne's point, if I may, the, the sec last one that you were reading, that you were about to read, uh, Jim, hiding. We're not hiding, which is where the holding statement comes from, that we are investigating. But the minute you say, oh, we've been hit by uh, something, the minute you say something, if it's not factual, then you're going to have big problems. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Um, Richard, d did you want to make another point or are we good on this? No, we're good, I think. Um, okay. Fine. Excellent. Excellent. Um, hang on. We're just getting it. Let me just close these out. Um, uh, Simon is saying a hold pattern. Hacker may need to be communicated if it's a destructive attack with a time limit. Actually, hold, hold, hold that thought. If you do not have cyber recovery capability or critical data, you may just lose access forever. Um, okay, Anne is saying agree. It has to be factual. You're holding statements. Um, uh, Okay, Virag is saying, I'm, I mean, one choice from the slide. There is always a multi-pronged approach. Well, I, you know, all I would say, Virag, is that I, I used to be a crisis comms, well, I suppose I still am a crisis comms person. And people used to say to me when I was training them, just tell me what to say, Jim, in any circumstance. And it just doesn't work like that. You have to respond to the facts on the ground as they arise. And it's, uh, would that it were simple, but I'm afraid that's one of the things that we know about this is that um you know we 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 don't know and we, we you know we don't always know the right thing to do but what we're trying to do today is figure stuff out um uh, okay and steve is saying steve thank you uh, one of the things i love about the you do webinars is the variety of points of view coupled with different experiences from around the world um so thank you very much for that indeed all right guys let's um i'm going to hide these results we are now going to move on, and I've got a crisis update for you. Um, and we have another update from IT Security, uh, who say this, we have received a ransom demand from the hackers saying that unless we pay them 10 Bitcoin immediately, they will start to drip feed customer details, including names, addresses, and credit card numbers on to the dark web. If we don't pay them within the hour, the ransom will increase. And they have indeed sent us several examples of the stolen data, which as far as our tech team is aware, do appear to be genuine. So uh, you guys on the crisis management team, we have received a ransom demand from the hackers, 10 Bitcoin, a substantial amount of money. I'm sure you all immediately know how much that is. Um, and they say that we have to, they have, we have to pay this within an hour otherwise it will increase and it looks like the genuine that the data that they have stolen appears to be genuine so inevitably i have another poll for you and this is i don't know i've done a lot of work with banks and so forth in the past running simulations and exercises and it's quite surprising how many people don't have a policy as far as a ransom demand is concerned. And that's something we want you to think about now. So I have a, um, a poll number five. What's your response to the ransom demand? Would you suggest to your bosses that the ransom is paid? Would you contact the hackers to try and discuss the situation? <laughs> Would you, have <laughs> I likes this one. Would you ignore it? Just ignore this threat, it's just nutters. You know, we're not gonna deal with this. Or would you, if you haven't done so already, contact the police so i'm going to launch this and i would like you to vote on this please there your poll number five what's your response to the ransom demand um 
And gosh, we've only got to 20 minutes left, guys, and we've got a fair bit to do. So if you could vote on this, um, I would appreciate it. Uh, we've got half of people have voted already, which is good news. So can we get some more people voting on this? I'd like to get it, yeah, we're, get, we're getting it there now. So we're up to 70%. Well, while this is going on, Jim, I guess we can save some time. Uh, I can tell you, most people in, in terms of clients and, and other people we know, their default position is never pay until they get hit. And then suddenly the options that they promised that they would never consider, they start to consider, which is really sad, but the, the truth. So okay. it's very All easy right. for those who have never been in that situation to go, never going to pay ransom but i can tell you from real life experience i've sat on on crisis actual attacks where they previously held the position they would never pay but now that they have been hit they are pondering and uh, wondering if they would pay which is really interesting okay it is it is indeed um just quickly thank you for that Amma. quickly return to i guess i gave you kind of an easy option here which most people have gone for which was contact law enforcement which i guess you would do which you probably may have done already um two percent said they would suggest paying the ransom eight percent would say to discuss um, with the hackers and two percent would say to ignore the threat richard in general terms do you have any thoughts on this please well of course it, you know a lot of companies now have got um ransom insurance uh there and in some of that uh decisions and, and that's actually driving a lot of this in, in the states about whether ransoms are paid and the insurance companies are more driving things to pay ransoms uh, than, than the individual company. So I think that the ethical people that are on this call are right in saying, A, uh, you know, very few people are suggesting paying the ransom because you're just funding uh, crime and funding lifestyle. But, um, you know, you've got a business to run and your business is just potentially ground to a halt. And I, I'm, a, I'm a sort of, a, black and white sort of person i'm i'm along with things do not pay the ransom um however um you know th there there are a lot of organizations who have as arma has just said who've had that position and then faced the entire shutdown of their organization um so um i think that the first step would probably be exactly on this what what people put on this chart um, i don't think anybody at the beginning when they received a threat like that would suggest paying the ransom um, but that might increase as as the impact is in fact um, uh, uh, extended during the process. Um, I think uh, uh, people do engage with hackers. Number B, um, they they do do it, but th these are people that are are not um, easy people to negotiate with. They take they operate like the just like any mafia organisation would do. Um, the chance of you getting a decent agreement is. Is pretty slim, but um, they, people do. But generally, you should not do that unless you have absolute professional advice and, and support. But certainly, it's an illegal act. Contact law enforcement. I would say, though, that law enforcement's capabilities for actually resolving your issue is extremely limited. And that's the whole thing about cybercrime: is that um, they can sit in jurisdictions that you don't have any control over. Law enforcement doesn't have, and they can. Do these criminal acts uh, without any fear of being caught. So uh, law enforcement definitely should be informed, but that's not going to solve your problem. Okay, great. Amma, before I turn to you, we've got a bunch of thoughts here from uh, people listening, which are pretty interesting. So Ravi says, do not pay the ransom. It's a slippery slope. Put out a statement so customers are made aware of malicious contacts. Yep. Stephanie asked the question, and maybe Emma, you could help with this actually. How many companies actually pay or pay on the first threat? Do you have any thought? Do you know about that? Do you have any information about that? There is some stats for, uh, floating around, Stephanie. It's a very good question. I can tell you from uh, experience with clients and, and potential clients after they were hit, many do consider, some do pay not very happy in in in, uh, in terms of paying many many of them don't get their data back and i'll be honest with you it's an unwritten rule they get put on the suckers list if you want to call it you know the the, the folks who pay and then they're attacked again and again 
uh, we have one person, one company will become a client. They were hit by three ransomware attacks, <laughs> right, in in two years, and then they became our client, and they paid twice. Uh, well, wow. what more can I say, right? Okay. Um, Great. Um, just Amo, just pause for a second. So Daniel, Dan is asking, do we have enough Bitcoin, or do we know, you know, do we know how to buy some? A lot of people wouldn't have a clue, but I'm sure the hackers would be very helpful in that. Um, I, can, I can tell you, Jim. Sorry to interrupt you. I can tell you one strategy some clients are using. I'm not saying you use that, please. But because they are directors, they sh they cannot engage in illegal activity. But what they have done is, believe it or not. I couldn't believe it, but that's what they actually have done. They have put in place a, 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 a process to buy Bitcoin. They've put the funds aside. And if they do get hit by ransom, they will say no, but somebody else will buy the Bitcoin and pay. So I'm telling you what's happening on the ground. Absolutely, I'm not supporting it. I'm not saying you do it. Please, for the record, don't do it because you are going to put get put on the suckers list and you there is no guarantee you'll get your money back so but just to let you know and and, and i think richard as you were saying in many countries it's becoming illegal and and axa axa has said in france that they would not pay ransomware uh, what do you call it um ransomware uh, insurance they they're, they're stopping ransomware insurance axa okay. insurance yeah okay yep. All right, great guys, great. Um, all right, we, I just need to move things along because um, we have more questions, but I'm, I'm going to pause those for a second because we only have a few minutes left and we've got quite a bit more to do. Um, so I'm going to launch our next poll. I'm not going to give you any more information, just going to launch our next poll, which is about your external comms response. And the question here is, what is your external comms response? Do you draft a detailed statement and send it to the press? Do you draft a detailed statement and wait for the press to get in touch with you? Do you contact the media to say your chief executive will be holding a press conference? Do you provide something much more limited, provide a briefing to the social media team, or do you send out a message to update customers? Once again, you know, it could be several of these, and it may be none of these. So we would like to hear what you think. We'd like you to vote on this, please, uh, about what your external comms response is. But as I say, if you don't like any of these options, then you know what to do. Put, your, put it in the Q&A box, and, and we'll discuss what you have to say. So please vote on external comms, see what you have to say here. Would you set, draft a detailed statement, send it to the press, uh, wait for the press to get in touch, maybe hold a, a press conference or provide a social media team briefing or message to update customers. We've got 50% of people have voted here. Um, I'd like to get through this as quickly as we can, please. So if you could vote on this, I would appreciate it. All right, we got 66% here. Okay, anybody else? All right, last dibs on this. I'm now going to close the poll here and I'm going to share the results with you. Um, we're fairly evenly split. So 24% go with the draft a detailed press statement, send it to the press. 16% uh, say draft a statement and wait for the press to get in touch. Um, 20% uh, ago for a press conference with the chief executive, 10% uh, go with provide briefing to the social media team, and 31% message to update customers. Amar, I'm going to ask you, what did you think your external, or well, your top task for external comms would be? Wow. In parallel, obviously, there are certain caveats here, but you've got to tell the customers first. If it's okay. a customer, in Beeswing's con uh, case, You've got to inform the customers first, followed very closely by obviously sending it to the press. But your customers should not find out from the press. In, in a very simple, and this is caveat to or you know all your facts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. All right. I, Richard, uh, sorry, oh, I'm, I'm giving very, I'm giving very simple short answers because we're running out of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty. Richard, go right ahead, please. Yeah, no, I mean, the press will get it from the customers for sure, because you're pushing it out to the customers. But actually, um, you know, uh, this this airline has to be a customer focused uh, or organization. And, you know, they're, they're the lifeblood. They're the ones that are going to stay with you and keep you going. So, and it, 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 you know, just by crafting the right message to the customers, that also is a, 
a way of actually pushing it out to the press in the same way. But you're putting the customers ahead of the newspapers, which is a very good thing to do. I just make a comment on the on I can see. You know, a lot of people. Will, I, I'm a great believer in, in in leadership being seen, the CEO being seen, or the top people being seen in any crisis, not hiding behind things. But it does depend upon who you've got there, who's leading that. Not, not all CEOs got to that job by being great in front of a camera. Uh, so you just don't want to put somebody who is not really good at this uh, into that position. That doesn't really help at all. But I, I, I am violently agreeing with Amar on terms of customers um, being, being right up there for the way you communicate to the outside world. Yeah, okay, good. Well, we've got a few uh, comments on this. Ravi saying message to customers is more personal, shows Beeswin cares and gives senior management to demonstrate empathy, remorse, helps in the long run, then a press release to follow. Of course, don't forget that anything that is, um, you know, internal is made external straight away. So if you do contact customers, they would very likely be talking to the press anyway. Stephanie saying a difficult one. Our customers are more important to us. But I would also add B, so drafting a statement there. Um, uh, Simon makes a good point. You can't contact three million customers, so a press statement to the press, um, you know, is a way of, of contacting customers. Um, and Anne is saying it's a combination of all: deliver statements to customer, then go to the media shortly afterwards. Okay, that's great, folks. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. I'm just going to hide those results, and we're going to move on to actually our final piece of information, which is a uh, another press story um, as which you hopefully you can see in front of you now Beeswing Airways is in chaos following revelations that it is the victim of a ransom demand hackers who say they have stolen thousands of customer details are threatening to post a range of this data online unless the ransom is paid we kind of know that already the data is sought to include customer names addresses and credit card details cyber experts believe customers trying to book flights on the Beeswing website were diverted to a fraudulent site where the transaction details were harvested by the hackers. And there's a reminder that uh, British Airways, a similar circumstance, faced a fine from the regulator of 130, 183 million. And with Beeswing, uh, typical newspaper stuff, Beeswing teetering on the knife edge. Will this push the struggling airline over the edge? Oh dear, you'll all be out of a job then. So there we go. Now, what I want you to think about, folks, now, and I am going to, have we got time? Yes, I, I've got time to launch one more poll. At the end of exercises, now, amazingly, we've almost come to the end of this one. I like people not to think in the moment, but to think ahead. What are you, what's going to be happening in the next days, weeks, and months ahead? And once again, I'm going to uh, give you some suggestions here. Uh, I'm going to launch this poll. And you can see the suggestions here. Um, you know, what, what are the big headaches you're going to face that maybe you were forced to pay the ransom and maybe that bounces back on you? Maybe you're struggling to build back trust with your customers. Perhaps there's a bunch of customers get together and they're pushing for compensation because of what has happened to you. Perhaps there's a threat of a big fine uh, from the regulator. And perhaps something very simple, but deeply scary, that the data loss turns to, out to be far more, uh, far greater than anticipated. Now, folks, that those are just some suggestions I'm going to make to you. If you if you want to think about what other, if if there's something else you would like to talk to talk about, you know, some other headaches, some other problems that you feel might be coming in the next days and weeks and months ahead, then please put that in the Q and A box as well. But if you could vote on that. And then this will then turn into our final discussion as to what will happen in the days and weeks ahead. Sorry, am I? Were you trying to get in there? No, I'm just because of time constraints. That's all. Yeah, no, um, please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think a lot of things here, but your since your question is in the next few days and weeks, I think they may uh, the, the 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 fine may come, but it takes a long, long time, right? So yeah. building trust because it's a it's a it's a if uh, I mean uh, an airline. So people are still going to maybe book, but they will still have to build that back. But I think uh, data loss may be far greater than anticipated. That always comes in the next few days and weeks. But there is no right answer. Many things of these are all pretty much on the same, right? And uh, a couple of things before I, I mean, I know time is up, up and running. Uh, folks, please, it's been a pleasure uh, for you to, to get me here. 
please do connect with me on LinkedIn if you want to. Absolutely happy. But there are too many uh, moving parts and you've got to build muscle memory. Uh, the, using applications, using practice, using tabletop exercises, you must build muscle memory to deal with these kind of things because it, this is a brilliant exercise, but actually a lot more happens and every, everything sure. happens in a different manner. Sure. Over to you. I, I, I totally get that. So here we go, guys. Here's this is what you guys think. Um, struggling to the, the big one they think is struggle to build back trust with customers. Um, and the second one, 26 percent, is that the data loss is far greater than anticipated. Richard, do you want do you have any thoughts on on, on this, please? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned on the previous slide about the fact is that uh, yeah, the airline is some financial sort of tender hooks, really. Um, and that would be a concern of a lot of customers. They've been seeing a lot of airlines go down. Um, building back that trust with the customers that you were a viable airline is probably going to be the biggest thing that you've got to do after this. Um, the, the, these cyber attacks are des desperately destruct, uh, destru destroying so much of the, of the fabric of a, of a, a really great organization. Um, but as I might have said, I mean, the, the effect of a cyber attack takes a long time to really figure out. All this happens in the first few days, et cetera, but the data loss could well be greater. So um, those two being the highest, bigger ones, I, I think uh, is, is, is right. But the biggest pro biggest focus in anything like customer-facing organization will be to um, build the trust with the customers going forward. All right, very good. Thank you very much indeed. We have, what are we, yes, we've got a few points here from, from our listeners. Um, every other so scenario, the, sorry, this is from Ravi, every other scenario can, can be somehow addressed through comms and mitigating controls. Trust is hard to rebuild, indeed it is, that's a good point. John is saying an excellent session, thank you very much, John. Um, and Stephanie is saying all of the above. Okay, um, well, there we are, guys. We seem to have rushed towards the finishing line. Um, we do actually have a couple of minutes left. Amar, did you have any other points that um, you wanted to make on, on this, on this uh, scenario or indeed anything, any other points you want to make um, about handling a cyber crisis? Uh, well, thanks for them, folks. Like I said, everyone, thank you for taking the, the R out. Oh, you can see my miniature Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> Uh, that's the one to compensate for those looks. Um, absolutely. Muscle memory, muscle memory for crisis. I think I can't say that too many times because you may have all the best documents. Uh, you may have all the best kind of plans, but if you can't access those documents, that's where uh, you do uh, crisis management approach comes in. And if you don't have muscle memory, if you don't tabletop it, if you don't practice it, you are going to make mistakes. I, I, I mean, I've been, like I said, I've got some gray hair here. And if you say that uh, we've been in through that many attacks, almost, I will, I will make mistakes because you are under pressure. People are shouting at you. You've got to build that muscle memory and you've got to have uh, the, the app and you've got to uh, be able to do out of, out of email. Email is not a crisis management tool, folks. Remember that, please. Especially in cyber attacks, email is not a crisis management tool. So get an app, talk to us if you want about tabletop exercises, incident response planning training, et cetera, et cetera. We can work with you on all of that. We have a free incident response plan template that you can use. I'll, I'll keep quiet for now. Thank you, everyone. Thank uh, you, you thanks, do. Thanks, Emma. Yeah. Richard, do you have a final thought for, the, for us before we close? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the story of so many of these sort of attacks is that um, communications or communications failures is is one of the main things. As somebody pointed out, how do you talk to three million customers? And and maybe you 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 know as as I'm saying is that if you've got a cyber attack, you know they've been in your system for maybe three months, four months, who knows? Um, you should assume that all of your communications are probably infected. They're reading the email uh, chain you're doing, and we, there's lots of instances where. The, the whole of the crisis response being communicated by email is just being read by the hackers and just being and you're just being tracked around and they're, they're ahead of you. So um, you need to be thinking about your communications that need to be uh, parallel and independent from your existing ones because those well could be compromised and you may well not have access to your broadband. You may not have access to internet because that's all been 
that makes crisis management in a cyber attack hugely more problematic. And, and you know, we talk about a lot of things we did today. We assume we are able to communicate, but that isn't often the case. So um, it's a really tough ask, and cyber is a, the challenge that we have got now for this year and for 10 to 20 years ahead of us. So we've got to get on top of it. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much indeed. That brings us to the end of this cyber simulation. I hope you find it fun, uh, but I also hope you found it very useful as well. And maybe there's some thoughts and ideas that you can take back to your own organizations that you need to think about. So good. There will be a recording of this made available shortly. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank the BCI for hosting this with us. Thank you very much to them. And it's goodbye from Amar. And it's goodbye from Richard, and it's goodbye from me as well. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, not sure what happened there. Catch you later. Thanks all. All right, Mariana, you can uh, shut this down, please.